Chef Daniel Bruce's culinary career got off to an inauspicious start. He spent two days scrubbing a mountain of burned pots at a restaurant in his hometown in Maine. He swore he would never burn a pot and never has while ascending to the summit of American cooking by way of Italy, France, and the best kitchens here in New York. Then he returned to New England and just marked 27 years as executive chef of the celebrated Boston Harbor Hotel, which includes oversight of the award-winning Meritage Restaurant and Wine Bar, as well as the Rose Wharf Sea Grill. Chef Daniel Bruce, welcome to The Dish. Great to be here. Tell us what you brought. So I brought some uh, sea scallops from George's Banks, pan-seared. I have uh, native corn, great time of year to have corn. Harvest vegetables or late summer vegetables simply roasted in the oven. Wild mushrooms with polenta. And my take on ants on a log. Tell us about the drink. And I also want you to share with our viewers what you told me about buying scallops, because it's a great tip. Sure, so two things. The uh, scallops, when you buy them in the store, make sure to get only translucent scallops. If they're white, they've been either previously frozen or there's been water added to them. And they'll be hard to cook. Secondly, the, the drink is a apple cider. The first press of apples just uh, just happened last week in, in Massachusetts. So wow. I have that with rose water and rose hips. I'm, mm. I'm very glad the, you filled my glass very full. <laughs> Absolutely delicious. Well, so we were telling our viewers you had an, an inauspicious start. How does one go from scrubbing pots and pans, which for some might have been a scarring experience, into, right. into the world you've been in? Well, no, as soon as I did that, I said, I really love the, the so there was a lot of energy in the kitchen. There, re, there was always a lot of energy. So I said, what do I have to do to move on to a dishwasher, which was my goal back then. <laughs> so, so quickly became a dishwasher and then started prepping when the chef asked me to make a few salads. And after that, I was like bitten. I had to be in the kitchen all the time. So mm -hmm. you went to culinary school, mm -hmm. but then you went off to Italy. How did you how did you end up there? So I met a, uh, a two-star Michelin chef, uh, Angelo Paracucchi. He came to the United States to do a uh, wine dinner, uh, an Italian. And as soon as I saw the uh, food he did, I was like, well, I thought Italian food was tomato sauce uh, and spaghetti. And he had, there was, no, there was no spaghetti or redwood sauce. So I was like really amazed. And he, uh, he was there for two days. And every time he saw me, he said, wow, you never leave this place. I'm, I said, I'm already home. So he said, you have to work with me. So I, back then, of course, there was no, uh, you know, phones, it was all done through the mail. Right. And he said to be at this place on the 27th of September. And I was there and I got there and five minutes later he rolled in. I told him I didn't speak Italian. He right. said, because uh, uh, his wife was speaking Italian to me very fast. And <laughs> he says with a big smile, don't worry, you will. So and you do now, don't you? I do, two years there, <laughs> made a big difference. So from Italy to Paris, how did you make that decision? Uh, he had, you know, once you get into uh, a good restaurant, usually the chef owners or uh, usually have connections and friends in the field. So I told him I'd love to work in uh, France and work uh, and do some training in, in France because they're very technically based in, in France. Uh, and so I worked in Paris for six months as well. But you finally made your way back to New England, which was, was that where you wanted to be? Well, I was in New York for six years. That was a sort of Good, good stint in New York. I uh, was at the Le Cirque uh, uh, back when it was the Mayfair region. Yes, yeah, uh, right. Um, and then I was at the 21 Club. That's uh, right. We decided to have a family, and we thought uh, it'd be nice to uh, have a smaller town to, to raise the children in. So uh, I was offered a uh, job up at uh, the Boston Harbor Hotel, and I'm like, what would I work in a hotel, hotel. for, uh, being a restaurant guy only? Uh, but, you know, 27 years later, it's been great, and I run them like restaurants. So. That's a, I mean, it, it's a sort of a rare statistic, 27 years in one place, with your level of experience. Yeah. Has it hard, is it hard to challenge yourself to keep the menu innovative? Uh, no, because every morning I get up, I'm excited about what I have for ingredients. I'm excited by the people I work with. Um, excited by uh, wine, I know that as well. I am all about <laughs> wine and food. And uh, I run the Boston Wine Festival. I founded it 27 years ago. And there are actually a series of winemaker-hosted dinners. So I have I've become good friends with the winemakers themselves. And... Yeah, that has made a huge difference. And you um, said your entire menu starts with the wine, then. That's your flavor profile for every meal you make. It does. I, I sort of have this sort of saying, which is uh, taste first. So I taste yeah. the wine first because the wine in the bottle is not going to change. Right. I need to adapt my flavors and ingredients to work idea. with it. And I say, okay, what ingredients and how can I treat these ingredients to make the wine shine? Because my job is to honor the wine. So. Right. Well, next time I tell you only a cocktail, just bring both. We're more than happy with that also. <laughs> All right, I can do that. Yeah. As we get this, your sure. signature on this dish, we want to ask you if you could have this meal with any person, past or present, who would that person be? Uh, well, that's easy. I would have it with my wife and my two children. Oh, so. that's always my favorite answer. <laughs> Chef Daniel Bruce, thank you so much. My pleasure.